All right, guys, this is worksheet eight, day two on 7.3. Is that right? Day two on hyperbolas. Oh, what is that? No, just kidding. Cancel. Um, this is the pink sheet, yes? Okay. Make sure you remember A is the one underneath the positive term. So when you have an X minus H squared in, fr in front with the minus back here, it opens around the X axis this way. When you have the Y minus K first under the positive term, it opens up and down. And A is what's underneath that positive term either way, and it doesn't have to be bigger than B is a different definition of A than it is when you have an ellipse. All right, with that in mind, who can tell me something about this? Okay, A squared is 16, so A is four. Okay, what else? Yes, be careful. This is y minus k and x minus h back here. So the center is h is 1 and k is 0. Now what? Mm. Underneath the y was the 4... Yeah, I get the words wrong, so you may have understood the concept. In it. Y goes up and down the square root of 16 or 4. In the X direction, we go square root of this, which is 2. I, I was saying horizontal for vertical and vertical for horizontal earlier and getting on myself all messed up. So we draw the rectangle, auxiliary rectangle, and we draw the asymptotes. Then what? It opens which way? Yes. And it doesn't touch the asymptotes, as mine clearly pretends not to, right? All right, what things do we have to list? The center, the vertices, the foci, and the asymptotes. Okay? We have the center. The vertices are here and here. Or as the sheet says, when it opens up and down, the vertices are at h comma k plus or minus a. Whoa. So this would be at one comma what? Plus or minus a, which was four. And since there's no adding or subtracting to do, you can leave it as a single. You could list it one, four, one, negative four, or leave it. Okay. How do you find C? This is an important idea. Yes, how do you know it's plus, not A squared minus B squared? Okay, it's a hyperbola. This is the way I remember it. When there's a minus here, this is a plus. When it's a plus in here, this is a minus, okay? The other thing that may help you remember it is that it's got to be inside the ellipse, so you got to make it smaller to stay inside. It's got to be outside the rectangle, so you got to add to make it bigger to go outside the rectangle. Because the foci needs to be somewhere inside of this hyperbola up here somewhere. All right, if we put in a 16 and a 4, we get C is the square root of 20. 
and the square root of 20 is 2 square roots of 5. All right. Now, is that so the foci are at 2 square roots of 5? No. C is the distance from the center out to there. That's important for what we're going to do in a few minutes, okay? You've got to understand the concept of what C is. The distance from the center out to the focus. So this sheet, if you were using this, whoa, says uh, the foci are at H comma K plus or minus C. So this would be H comma K, which is zero, plus or minus C, which is two square roots of five. And there's no adding or subtracting we can do, so we can just leave it like that. All right. Asymptotes go through the center. So they are y minus k equals, it's either a over b or b over a, plus or minus, and then x minus h, which is x minus 1. How do you know if it's a over b or b over a, besides the pink sheet? Does anybody remember what my hint was? Yeah, change underneath the y which is the square root of that, or 4, over change underneath the x, square root of that is 2. So I'm thinking it says a over b on the sheet. Keep going the wrong way. Uh, this one says a over b. Okay. So when we write a over b, we get 4 over 2, which reduces to... So it's y equals plus or minus 2 times the quantity x minus 1. Now, does that make any sense for this picture? Does it look like that line was going up 2 and over 1, up 2 and over 1? Okay. If I did this branch that had a positive slope and I distributed here, I would have 2x minus 2. Does it look like the y-intercept down here was negative 2? Okay, those are all things that you can do to check that you've done it correctly. All right, moving on to, I don't know why it won't let me. All right, we need to complete the square twice. The x squareds were in pretty good shape. Just need a blank. But what do we have to do with the y squareds and the y's? Take out a what? Negative 4. Be careful because you've got to have a positive y squared in the parenthesis here. So we're going to take out a negative 4 out of the y squared is just y squared, but when you take 24 divided by negative 4, you get minus 6y. And then I'm going to move this guy over to the other side so he'll become 36. plus something, plus something else, right? All right, when we complete the square for x, we take half and get 2, square it and get 4. What do we add to the other side? Just a 4. Then we have minus 4, and completing the square on the y gives us y minus 3, squaring that is a positive 9. Guys, this is always a positive number back here, right? It came from squaring this guy. But when we go to add it to the other side, we're doing what? Negative 4 times 9. So we have a negative 4 times 9 over here. Well, that's negative 36. This was a positive 36. So all we have left over there is 4. And then what do we have to do still? Divide everything by 4 so that we have equal to 1. Yes, this is a crazy process. x minus 2 squared over 4 minus y minus 3 squared over what? 1 equals 1. All right. Uh, Riley, tell me one thing. Okay. I see her tell me one thing. Okay. 
catch up. Kirsten, tell me one thing. Doesn't have to. Okay. We need C. We need foci. We need to know which way it opens. Anybody have any of that? Okay, C is the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared, which would be square root of 5. I think I'm going to start drawing 2, 3 is up here. Then what? Okay, which way does it open? Left and right, but do I go left and right 1 or 2? Two and up and down one. I didn't do too bad on that one. Fortunately, I hit my asymptote there. All right, I need vertices, foci, and asymptotes. Um, two plus or minus A, which is two comma three. So 4, 3, and 0, 3. Does that seem okay for the picture up there? Okay. Foci are at 2 plus or minus C, which would be... And it's okay to leave it when it's a radical like that. All right, guys? It would be... <laughs> square root of 5 is like 2 point something, 2.2 2 or something. So it would just be barely inside there. which makes them narrow when they're just barely inside there and they were pretty narrow. All right, what do I still need to find? Okay, so it's always y minus k, which was what? y minus 3 equals plus or minus b over a for this one or what's underneath the y, square root of number one that's underneath the x, so it's one half. Does that make sense for the picture, guys? Did we go up one box and over two when we drew those asymptotes? And then x minus k, x minus h, I'm sorry, which is x minus 2. And you can leave them in that form. You don't have to get them in y equals form. All right. Does that seem to have reviewed all the concepts about hyperbolas? The next part of this is working backwards and finding the equation. I have an example, so you can just watch real quick, but there's some concepts you need to understand. If you know the vertices, how could you find the center? If you only knew the foci, how could you find the center? Right? That makes sense? All right, I'm going to sketch just so I know which way it's going. It helps me a lot. If I go left 3 and down 6, left 3 and up 2, and those are the vertices, which way is my example opening? It's not. This is not the one you have, guys. Yeah, if those are the vertices, they line up up and down, so they're opening this way, okay? Now, this was interesting, okay? Everybody watching? This was negative 3. 2, and now inside here at negative 3, 3 is a focus. Negative 3, negative 6, negative 3, negative 7 is a focus. Somebody last period said C is 1. Do you know where they got that? This is one unit inside of here, right? So that was a really good idea to think about that as one unit inside of there. But C is actually the distance from what to what? Yes, from the center to the focus, okay? So C is not 1. 
All right, can you find the center for me? Negative three plus negative three divided by two is negative three. Okay, negative six plus two is negative four divided by two is, so over here at negative three, negative two is the center. So we already know H and K, right? All right. Now, you could find A conceptually. What is the concept for A, guys? Center to the vertex is A, and center to focus is C. So then could we find B? All right, so let's talk our way through this. From negative 3, negative 2 to negative 3, positive 2 makes A what? From negative 2 to positive 2 is a distance of 4. From negative 2 to positive 3 is a distance of 5. So 5 squared equals a squared plus b squared. 25 minus 16 is... I really don't even care that b is 3, do I? Because I'm trying to write an equation. Anybody ready to write the equation yet? What do you think, Katie? Almost. There you go. Yep. Took me a minute. Okay. Anybody have questions for her where she got any of that? Hopefully she was thinking about or looking at this, right? As soon as she knew it opened up and down, she would knew it was this general form with the Y first, okay? And then, oh, did I go the wrong way? So she knew the whole top right away as soon as she found the center. The bottom part, she had to figure out the distance from the center up and down, and that was A, so squared was 16. And then remember, we did this backwards to find B. All right, I'm going to do the same question, but this time I'm going to use a little bit more of a rote recipe from the picture, from your sheet, okay? Because I know some of you like to just do it that way. This one is left 10 and up 6 and right four and up six. So if those are the vertices, which way does this open? Right. Yes, it opens this way. Yes. Um, your book does some and we are not. It, they would have an X, Y in them. See how we have x squareds and y squareds and x's and y's, but we have no term that's like an x times a y? If you have an x, y term in there, then it's twisted sideways. All right. Um, the, this was negative 10, 6, and 4, 6. If you look at, let me see, which way? If you look here, when they share the same k value, it has to be open in this way, right, guys? Just so you were very clear, if you were confused, you didn't graph it or something. Why won't it? Okay. So they share the same k value, so that k value is 6. But to find the h value, we have to do midpoint. Negative 10 plus 4. Is negative 6 divided by 2 is 3. Negative 3, everybody okay that the midpoint was at negative 3, 6? So that's our center. All right. If we were stuck then and we were trying to find A, the vertices right here are H plus or minus A comma K. So if I know the vertices, our h plus or minus a comma k, and I know h is negative 3, and the vertices up here are at negative 10 and 4. I'm just going to write this one down. 
if this is true, what was A? Okay, it could be positive seven or negative seven, depending if you did plus or minus. Does it really matter? A is a distance, so we're just gonna call it seven. Does everybody see what I did there? Negative three plus A equals negative 10 or minus. If we add over here, we get negative seven or seven distance. All right, the other thing from this sheet was that the foci are H plus or minus C comma K. So the foci are at H plus or minus C comma K. And we know this is negative three plus or minus C comma six. And one of the foci was at negative 12, six. If I write that down here, let me figure out what C has to be. If I set those equal, negative three plus C equals negative 12. We get nine. Everybody okay? What do we still have to find? So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Be 81, 49 plus B squared. We subtract and we get 32. It's an ugly square root, but we don't even have to graph this. All we need is the equation, so we really only need B squared. Okay. Mm. Monica, can you throw something into our equation for us? What do you think, guys? It's going sideways. You see what we're talking about? It's going sideways, so the X has to come first. There we go. And this one is gonna be y minus six, okay? Uh, Emerald, can you throw in something more? A squared is 49 and it goes where? Yep. And back here, anybody? All right. The quiz, guys, doesn't just have graphing, okay? It probably has two graphing questions. My guess is one of which the center is just zero, zero, okay? So it's easy. Not positive, but I think. And then there's two find the equation questions. So this is, I'm not just doing these for fun. All right, I don't think one of those two is like this because it asks for the length of the transverse axis. But just go with me for a second here. If these are the foci, we know two things. What are the two things that will help us find? The center is halfway through between those. So zero, mm, if we add that, we get two divided by two is one. Good job. So the center or H and K are zero, one. From one foci to the other, yes, is two C. So how far apart are those guys? From negative four to six is 10. So C is five. All right, we're getting somewhere. Can you tell which way it opens? I would have sketched it, but you can tell by looking at your sheet probably. Over zero up six, over zero down four, so it's going this way. Remember those are not the vertices, they're the foci, but don't matter for as far as it opens up and down. Okay, so it starts out with the X or Y? So Y minus zero, no, liar, liar. It's Y minus K, right? Y minus one minus X minus zero. Okay. We don't know A or B at the moment. We gotta go to this sheet and figure out this transverse axis business. The transverse axis, which way was this one opening? Up and down, so it's this guy over here. The transverse axis, guys, is an equation 
of a line that goes through here. Okay, it's x equals h. But the definition of in the rectangle, the length of the transverse axis would be from vertex to vertex, so it would be what? Okay, the length of the transverse axis would be 2a. The axis that runs the other way across is the conjugate, so the length of the conjugate would be what? If we were given that. Again, I didn't put the I didn't put those on the quiz, okay? All right, so let's finish this one. If transverse is a total of eight, that means two A equals eight, so A is what? So we need a 16 where? Okay. And then how are we going to find B? Um, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Guess what that comes out to be? B squared is 9. We're done. Everybody okay back there? I put a hole in the drywall in my kitchen because I have a wheelie chair like this in my kitchen and I leaned over too far out of it and like the chair flipped up and like the wheel of the chair went right through the drywall. Nice. It's a good moment. My children were laughing hysterically. So. Okay. We were playing games and I dropped a card and went to pick it up and flipped the chair. All right, guys. This is really the hardest kind for most students. Okay. The reason this is tricky, this one is not. I'm going to tell you right now, this one is super easy. But the reason this can be tricky is because we're going to need this slope. And this is either going to be A over B or B over A, which sounds really easy. But what if it was originally 9 over 12? Would that have reduced to 3 fourths? And 9 squared and 12 squared are not the same as 3 squared and 4 squared, right? Okay, so sometimes this is reduced slope, and we have to be really careful. All right, we're going to just work with what we know here. Foci tells us what? They tell us C. 2C is the distance. How far apart are those, guys? Right there, that is a distance of 10. So C is 5. What else can the foci tell us? The center. Can you add and divide by 2 and tell me what you get? Good job. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to do a sketch. Over 2, down 2, over 12, down 2. If those are the foci, which way does this thing open? So what's the equation look like so far? The only other thing we know is that C is 5. But we know when it opens sideways, okay, right here, it says the slope is what? B over A. Okay, so B over A has reduced to 3 fourths. How do you know if it's reduced by much? Yeah, if you do 3 squared plus 4 squared and you get 5 squared, has it been reduced? No. Okay. If you didn't, then you'd have to figure out what was going on here, how you got to this C value. Okay. But it is just 3 and 4, so what are we going to have? This one is going to be over 16, and this one's going to be over because a squared is 16 and b squared is 9 and we're done. If you find me one where it doesn't work and the slope isn't right, we'll go over it in class on Monday, okay? All right.
couple really quick review questions here. Can you tell me where the center of this one is? I don't like this question, so I'm going to go really fast. The center is 50, 35. Let me tell you why I don't like this. Because this graph paper going across counts by 20s. So 50 is here. And up and down, it counts by 10s. So 35 is here. It came with a book. And I didn't change it. Um, how far does it go in the x direction, guys? Square root of 1600 would be 40 in the x direction. Now, 40 in the x direction is exactly two boxes. I'll just give you a hint here. Okay. In the y direction, it goes square root of 2500, which is 50. Up and down, that's five boxes, which we have room to go up, but we don't go down. It's just off the bottom of the box, guys. Okay. We're supposed to graph this, so you need to do your best to come up with a rectangle, which I did a really crummy job of. And then it should be going which way? The X was positive. Look at your sheet if you need to. Which way is that? Okay. It's here. It's very wide. All right. The only other, I'm not going to find the equations of everything. It just said draw a sketch. We did. But it does say find the location of the seismographs. Did anybody read the question? The epicenter of an earthquake lies on one of these branches somewhere when it's measured from the seismographs, which are at the foci. Okay? So we need to find the foci. So when it opens sideways, it should be 50 plus or minus what? Is that how it goes, guys? Do I have it written correctly when it opens sideways? Okay, so we got to find C. A squared was 1,600. B squared was 2,500. So C squared, 4,100 square rooted. Okay, that actually is 100 times 41, so we'd have what? Okay, so 50 plus or minus 10 square roots of 41. Can we call it a day? Okay, just kidding. We're not done. We got to talk about eccentricity, but we finished that question. Absolutely. Your stuff? You what? No, 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 you're fine. All right, guys, we're going to do super quick on this one, too. Um, if the center is at 3, 4, and it's opening up and down, somebody start out the equation. All right, now, if these are the vertices up here and down here, can you tell me A right away? This is 2A, right? The distance between those, or A is the distance from here to here, which is two boxes. So A is 2, so where do I put A squared? Okay, so there's going to be a 4 there. Now. We could do, I did a bunch of crazy business work to try to find the rest of this equation, but it turns out that this is the rectangle right here. So it goes how far? Three either way, so this is a nine. C 
See what I did was I plugged in zero zero because it looks like it's going through zero zero and I worked backwards to find this, but it still was a nine. So I'm just going to go with that. Okay. Now this is a super easy question. It says, how long is this for this grassy field? How, it, how many units right there, guys? Four boxes, right? And each one of those is three feet. So the narrowest part <laughs> has a vertical width of 12 feet. Good enough? Okay. Eccentricity. This is really important. So if you've been sleeping, wake up. Eccentricity is the distance between the foci divided by the distance between the vertices. We talked about this last week. It has to do with the stretch, okay? Here's a picture. When you have the distance between the foci is red, the distance between the vertices is blue. If you put red over blue, you're gonna get more than one or less than one? This will be less than one for an ellipse, right? because the red is shorter. Over here, the red is the distance between the foci, always, and the blue is the distance between the vertices. If I put red over blue over here, I'm gonna get greater than one. Does, does that make sense? All right, so what you need to write down here, this shows that for an ellipse, the eccentricity will always be less than one and i don't care if you just write less than one but it can't be negative so i wrote zero is less than e is less than one okay for a hyperbola e will always be greater than one these two you must memorize a parabola only has one vertex and one focus so its eccentricity will be one that's not on the pink sheet Eccentricity of a circle. Okay, remember the top number means distance between the foci. Look up here. See that ribbon? What happened when I put the two foci or the pieces of tape on top of each other? I got a perfect circle. What was the distance between the foci at that point? Zero. Okay, so the eccentricity of a circle is zero. Those two things are not on the pink sheet. And on the quiz, you have to do some completing the square and then it says find the eccentricity. If it's a circle, you just have to know it's zero, you write it down, you're done. If it's an ellipse or a hyperbola, then you gotta find C over A. If it's a parabola, you just write down what? One and you're done. All right, here we go. A is a what? What shape is this? Okay, it's a hyperbola. So when we're done, it should be greater than one, yes? But what is the definition? We need to find C over A. What's A? Are you sure? Okay. A for a hyperbola is the one under the positive. So this is A squared, so A is two. How do you find C? Okay, so A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Four plus 21 equals C squared, which is 25. So C is five and we get five halves. Is that greater than one? We're good to go. All right, for B, we have to do some completing the square. Can I do Hofbauer magic? I'm just going to go fast. What am I taking out of the Y's? Positive 9, right? Negative 253 plus 4 times 16 plus 9 times 25. 
half power magic says it turns out 36. So we get x minus 4 squared over 9 plus in the middle. <clears throat> what does that mean? It is an ellipse. An ellipse means it should be over what? Or the eccentricity should be less than 1. It's still C over A. What's A this time? Which one is A? How do you know? It's not always the first one, but it's always the bigger one. So A squared is 9, so A is 3. How do you find C, though? A squared minus B squared. So it's 9 minus 4. C is the square root of 5. Square root of 5 divided by 3, is that less than 1? Not by a lot, but it is. Okay, so one more time. Eccentricity of a circle. Say it out loud. Eccentricity of a circle. Eccentricity of a parabola. One. Okay. Guys, this is what you should be working on. Finishing page 449. Wild guess. Some of you haven't started it. And as of Wednesday, you have to have done worksheets 9, 10, 11, and 12. Monday, I'm going over questions on all that. So find all those worksheets and get them done.